Hey, I'm Johnny Ferrance here with Singular Agronomics, excited to bring to you a series more on carbon to nitrogen ratio. We talk about humic acids with, with fertilizer applications. Hey, we're here for the next part of the series talking about carbon and nitrogen ratio and when it would get too high. I know we talked about in the last film, we talked about that 10 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. Um, on the too high of side, we're looking at anything above, personally I like that, that 15 to one or even, you know, there's some soils that I've seen around that 18 to one to 19 to one. Um, and the reason why I consider those high is because of what it could cause to the nutrients you apply to your soil. So carbon's a great thing. I don't want a misunderstanding here saying, gosh, I thought those levels were good because we talk about funguses, they, they thrive in a high carbon to nitrogen uh, ratio. So I, I'm trying to play this middle ground of when we're putting a dollar out on that field uh, with our fertility, we're also getting that in return. And that's why I like uh, our carbon to nitrogen ratios to be below that 15 to one or 15 to one to 12 to one. Because what happens is when there's an overabundance of carbon in that system, when you apply nitrogen, carbon and the, the microbes are gonna take that, mainly the microbes are gonna take that right away because they need that accessible nitrogen to be the building blocks for when they divide and colonizing in these areas. So when we apply that nitrogen, we gotta make sure it's in a band when we're dealing with a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio because then within that band, we're still gonna have some available to the crop. We always gotta remember, microbes are gonna eat before our plants do. So if our carbon to nitrogen ratio is significantly higher, above that 15 to one, 18 to one, we can see immobilization happen with the nitrogen we apply. So it's just changing your management. And what that management would look like is maybe we put more pounds in a band, or maybe we are able to have a natural buffer that we can put more on in the beginning of the season. It's just understanding that number through a soil test and taking that data to help us determine what we applied to that field. So we are here talking about high carbon to nitrogen ratios. Uh, just remember that number, anything above that 15 to one and the closer you get to 20 to one, the chancing, chances of immobilization of nitrogen get significantly higher. And if we see that, what we need to be doing is strategizing of how to apply our nitrogen to be more efficient. Um, it's a great thing to be there and it's more common to be too low than too high, uh, but we gotta know once we get there, we gotta be able to manage it. So with that, we'll catch you on the next part of the series where we're gonna talk more about different inputs and their effects on carbon to nitrogen ratio. Guys, thanks for watching the content so far. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got all the full length podcasts, other video information, tutorials on there. Also on all the major uh, podcast platforms and social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera. So if you like this, go ahead and check more out on all those platforms.